Welcome to Erica's Tea Room. I'm Erica. This is my mom, Lila. Together, we present a high tea experience. We host events. We have fun fashion shows. We share our recipes and our teas with family and friends. But above all, we make memories with every cup. So tonight we're doing Dirty Dancing. We have a four course menu, each of them paired with a different tea. So starting with our candy scone, we're doing it with our sugar plum fairy tea. The sweetness of the fruits in the tea are going to be a really nice complement to the candy that we've used. After that, we're doing a bagel with a schmear. So we've prepared a fresh pimento cheese and we also are complementing that with our blueberry cinnamon crumble tea. The berries are gonna bring out the spiciness of the pimentos in the pimento cheese. After that, we have our spaghetti arms with meatballs. And so for a little different, more rich flavor, we've paired that with my favorite Earl Grey creme tea. The vanilla overtone um, lowers the bergamot that is traditional in an Earl Grey. And so it's a nice balance of savory to go with our savory meal, our meatballs and our spaghetti. So, and finally tonight, we're ending our meal with a watermelon pie. And with that, we have it paired with our strawberry guava white tea. I think the tropical fruits are gonna really blend together and be a nice complement for each other. I hope everyone enjoys our meal tonight. The first tea is ready to go whenever you get it. Okay, perfect. We're just gonna do the introduction and then we'll be ready for it. See, much different than Erica, I have to gun once. <laughs> I don't have to gun multiple times. <laughs> so Erica, what, you, what are you doing? I'm carrying the watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> it's so heavy. I don't think I can manage this. We're from Ocala, and I've been to Erica's tea room about 20 times. This is her second time. Um, we would come more if we could, but it's a little bit of a drive. What I like most about the tea room it is well, Erica and her mother. They're very nice people. The atmosphere is great. I love the tea, the different course of food. They do paintings and trivia. I love the environment. I love the people. You know, they're really nice people. The teas are always really good and you know I like to try I don't really explore much so when I come here I do get to explore different foods and different teas and I'll find out what I like and what I don't like. I like taking my mother here for Mother's Day or just come with a group of girls for a girls night out. For sure. I would come every Saturday if I could. Welcome to Erica's Tea Room. Located in the heart of downtown Claremont, this specialty tea shop offers a traditional high tea experience that can be enjoyed with family and friends. While here, you can choose from over 100 teas from all over the world, and a multitude of teapots are available for purchase. Join us for lunch or choose from one of our special evening events. Call to make a reservation. Erica's Tea Room, making memories with every cup. treats for your tea table. Today we're focused on pumpkin. It's all about the pumpkin today with pumpkin scones, pumpkin cheesecake, and a pumpkin cream cheese spread for tea sandwiches. I think we're going to be pumpkined out. It could be spectacular. Spectacular? Spooktacular. Oh, spooktacular. Erica has bats in her belfry today. And that's not just today. So let's get started with my scones. 
So I have my four cups of flour. I put the half cup of sugar in, and now we're going to get all the pumpkin in. So we're going to do three teaspoons of pumpkin spice. So you're not going to actually have pumpkin in your pumpkin scones. We're using pumpkin spice to get that flavor in. And pumpkin spice is really strong, so I put a couple of heaping teaspoons. I'm going light on the other two. Then ground cinnamon is one teaspoon. But you know what? I like a little extra ground cinnamon, so I'm going to go heaping there too. See how nice? Can I have the baking powder and salt? So I'm going to still put in my two tablespoons of baking powder. And finally, I'm going to put in my half a teaspoon of salt. Now, of course, I said this to you before, you always want to put a little salt in something sweet to bring out the sweetness. So I'm just going to use a half a teaspoon of salt. Using my pastry blender, I'm going to blend all the dry ingredients. I'm going to move this a little forward so you can see what I'm doing. It's going to aerate the flour again, putting nice amounts of air in, and also blending all the dry stuff. Smell that, eh? Mmm, it smells like the fall. All the cinnamon and clove and the pumpkins in the pumpkin spice. I kind of miss the fall weather, and these scents kind of remind you of fall up north, enjoying the crisp air. Crisp air? Crisp air. Is air really crisp? Yes, it is. <laughs> So in this bowl, I have my half a cup of heavy cream. I'm going to add two eggs to it. Hopefully no shells. A couple years ago, we were doing an event, and this lady was infatuated by mommy cracking eggs one-handed. So finally, she had to say, I have to stop. I only need two eggs. And so egg cracking with one hand, I guess, is a novelty. So here I have the uh, egg, two eggs and the heavy cream. I'm going to whisk these together before I enter them into the dry ingredients. Actually, Erica wants to do that. She's a good whisker. The other thing, while she's whisking the eggs, I'm going to add butter to the dry ingredients because here's where we make it look like a biscuit. So this is a half a stick of butter. To the dry ingredients, I added the half a stick of butter, and I'm going to use my pastry blender to cream this into the dry ingredients to make it flaky. So you just want to get it spread all evenly around in the dry ingredients. And no lumps, as, as little lumps as you could possibly do. Who wants lumpy scones? So Erica has beaten my eggs, not as good as I'd like them to be beaten, so I'm going to get all the extra pieces out, and that's what it should look like. It shouldn't have any swirls in there, it should be really incorporated, and get all that good wet stuff in, and then I'm going to blend this in. She took my bag of pumpkin spice chips to put into these scones. It's going to add some more pumpkin flavor. You know, this time of year you could find all these different types of chocolates and it's fun to add those to your scones or to your cakes to make good flavors come up. You don't have to though. You can have this be a plain scone just with the flavor of pumpkin. But to enhance it, we're going to use chips, um, pumpkin spice chips. You can also add chocolate to this if you wanted to or you can add some nuttiness to it by adding some nuts. Yeah, this would good. It would be very good with this pumpkin spice uh, chips, plus some walnuts or some pecans. Very, very wintry. Don't think that when you're doing your scones, it just has to be one way. You can have a lot of fun and play with your flavors. Do your plain at what we're doing right now, and then add lots of different bits. Then also, if you like nutmeg, I'm not a nutmeg fan, but a little touch of nutmeg would be very nice in here, or clove or allspice, 
But that pumpkin spice blend has all of that in there. So it's really enough of all those flavors. So once I get to this point, I'm going to take my plastic knife because it cleans the blade so nicely. And then I take off all these good things and then I'm going to put my hands in to actually blend this a little better. I'm not going to put those chips into the very end till I, I'm almost ready to form the ball. So now that I have all the ingredients in here, I'm going to use the best tools, my hands, and get this to form a nice soft ball. And then last, we'll put in the pumpkin spice chips. So this is going to form a very nice soft ball. Give me another minute and it'll come all together. Ugh, I wish you could smell this. All the spices really smell heavenly. This is the perfect time of year when everything you want is pumpkin. You want a pumpkin tea. You wanted your pumpkin scones. Now we just got our seasonal teas in and I love smelling them, especially the gingerbread. And this is very similar. This pumpkin spice scones look, look like gingerbread. Look how that looks like gingerbread, doesn't it? It has that same coloring because of the pumpkin spice seasoning. Absolutely, and you want, you want to put that all in here to make that smell and that, especially the taste. Mm. So I'm going to finish doing this ball, wash my hands, and then we'll put in these chips and roll this sucker out. Look how nice that is. So give me a few minutes to wash my hands. We'll come right back and we'll put the, this, um, the pumpkin spice chips in and make that look good. So now we have the ball nicely put together. We're going to add the chips. Erica's going to add a... Look how cute these are. These are the... The new pumpkin spice chips, they're like two-toed. They almost look like a... They look like either candy corn candy or almost corn. teeth. That's what they look like. <laughs> That's what they look like. So I'm going to fold these in. So beautiful, incorporated in, and now I'm going to roll it out. So I need some flour. Always put your flour down first because even though it's incorporated, the dough is a little sticky. So the flour will keep it from sticking to my... Uh, parchment paper here. Okay, and I'm going to put this here. Then I'm going to put some flour on my rolling pin and some more flour. I'm making a mess like always. I always make a mess. And she tells me I'm the messy cook. Yes. When do you cook? She's the messy cook that never cooks. So, if I had my teeth in, my witch's teeth, I'd tell her to bite me. Yes, of course. So let me put this together. And these are going to really roll out very fast because these uh, chips are not allowing me to go down too thin <laughs> with this dough. I would say to you, this is going to be like three quarters of, a, of an inch thick. Hey, a bigger scone, the better. Yeah. So here's that. Look how beautiful that is. You see all the little pieces of, this, that, um, of the chips, which is really cute. But what's nice, look at that for, uh, for Halloween. Eric is grabbing them for me, so I shouldn't show you. Hey, the faster I take them, the faster we get them in the oven, and the faster I can taste them. Yes, absolutely, Erica. <laughs> but look how easy this dough is. It's such a beautiful dough, and it made such... Look, at, I, I can't get over those chips. They're so cute. Okay, I'm going to put this back in the bowl and roll out the other half. And then we're going to put this in the oven and bake them. They bake for about 15 minutes or until it becomes brown. So in this color dough, it's really a little difficult to see when they become brown. But you see how light it is around the edge? You'll see that get darker. And then you'll know that they're done. And then I'll show you midpoint to use a um, spatula. And you can also turn them over and see the brownness of this. But this is really going to cook up real fast because there's not a lot of dough, Erica Robin. There isn't, but every time you add a new bit, like the candy pieces, you get more qual uh, quantity out of your dough. Yes. More, more quantity. quantity? Yes. It's quality and quantity. That's that we want. it. It's quality, not yeah. quantity. Both. Oh. Mrs. Malaprop. You think I was the one with the MBA? 
<laughs> but what's nice about oh, I keep I keep in smelling the, <laughs> the gingerbread. It's really lovely. You know how your parents told you not to play with your food? I need to tell my mother not to smell her food first. But that's the whole thing of cooking and baking. You want to smell it and you want to taste it. You want to see it. No, it's I want to eat it. <laughs> That's the truth, Erica. The heck with everything else. You just want to eat it. Can you go get me the next tray? It's good I had two trays prepared. But it's still not going to give me two full trays. It probably will give me a tray and a half. Let's see. And of course, we need that, that little runt at the end because that's the one that we have for tasting purposes. Absolutely. So this is the last piece of dough. We're going to roll it out and have beautiful scones. You can also sing to your food. I like to sing to my food. So if you're singing, do, re, mi. Do, re, mi? Do, re, mi. Why is it do, re, mi? Do, a dear, <laughs> dear, mal, dear. Oh, Erica. Re, a drop uh, you know, I didn't get sun. that. Usually I get her very fast, but I didn't hear that part. Who doesn't part. like sound of music? <laughs> sound of music. I like the sound of quiet <laughs> while I'm baking. So here is, should be my last full scone. Getting a full scone out of it, excellent. And then this piece, of course, is our runt. This is the one that we taste. Everybody shares the runt to see how it tastes. <laughs> so I'm gonna get it's that. It's a mini. It's a mini. Okay, we're gonna put that on there. I'm gonna clean up, and when we come back, we're gonna have these in the oven. And actually show you how they look when they come out. Welcome back to Erica's Tea Room. We are taking our pumpkin spice scones out of the oven and look how fluffy they are. We're going to show you how beautifully brown they are on the bottom in just a moment. And I cannot wait to taste these. They smells like fall in here. So to test these, I took my handy tool and made sure they're nice and brown on the bottom. See how nice and brown they are? Those ah, are they are hot, Erica. They are hot. And especially be careful when you're picking them up because the chocolate chips, or in this case, the pumpkin spice chips, do get really, really hot, yeah, especially right out of the oven. see how pretty they are? They're nice and brown. And now this, I'm going to show you. Cut out, open the middle and see how nice. You see how beautiful that is inside? Nice and soft. And you see all the chips and how good that is. Yummy, yummy for my tummy. Yeah, we have to let them cool before we try them. So we'll be right back and we're going to put the scones in a nice container and we'll be back with our next recipe. Welcome back. We're ready to make our pumpkin spread and have that as a little sandwich option for your Halloween tea table. So I started with eight ounces of whipped cream cheese. I always like whipped cream cheese. I don't know. It's easier to work with. Yeah, people do the brick, but to me, to soften the brick, it's already soft. So I'm gonna add a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and I'm eyeing it. You can add a little bit more if you want to. You can add a little less. And then it calls for two teaspoons of pumpkin spice. More, more. Yeah. That I measure because, again, pumpkin spice is spicy. <laughs> Isn't it funny? We always think only of pumpkin in the fall months. The rest of the year, pumpkins are forgotten. Fruit, vegetable? We have to look that one up. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So I put in the spices. I'm going to add a half a cup of walnuts and a half a cup of raisins. Now, if you don't like raisins, cranberries would work. But I like raisins. and I like cranberries. I'm going to give you this to, to give me a nice stir on that, Erica. Yes. And then I bought actual pumpkin swirl bread because it's all about the pumpkin. This would be great in a bread bowl out on your Thanksgiving table or a Halloween party. Serve with some pretzels, or maybe some potato chips. Uh, or crackers. Um, so I'm cutting off the ends because, again, it's for your tea table. And this is going to make two sandwiches. 
because we're all about the size. So I'm going to get rid of the ends. The ones called stinking ends. And then I'm going to cut this on a diagonal and make us a tea sandwich. A tea sandwich. And remember to add some fingers to your sandwiches. Absolutely. We're going to have finger sandwiches. So look how pretty that all looks. That's your raisins and everything else. And then I'm going to take, Eric, give me one of the regular butter knives. And I'm going to smear up this bread. And that's how easy this is. You know, you could also serve this on celery. Too. Remember how you mm. used to do bumps on a log? Ants on a log, not bumps on a log. Didn't it have bumps? No. Didn't it have bumps, Erica? No. Oh, I, well. didn't, I didn't like celery. <laughs> so you could do this on celery, or as Erica said, if you take a pretzel rod and schmear this on, schmear is a good word, Erica? Schmear. Schmear. It's the sound that your cream cheese makes when you're using a knife. It schmears. So look how beautiful. We made two pumpkin sandwiches. Look how nice that looks. And it's super easy, five minutes or less, and it's a great little addition to a lunch box or to your Halloween tea table. Absolutely. You can make it as pretty as you would like. You can have them standing up, sitting down. Can we teach you to roll over? Oh, and do tricks. Okay. Also keep in mind, use a fun cookie cutter. Make it a pumpkin shape. Yes, I was looking for my pumpkin shape. I could not find it. Should have asked me. <laughs> so when we come back, we're going to do a pumpkin cheesecake. Yummy. Welcome back to our pumpkin night. And we're making tea treats for your Halloween tea table. And we are all set to make pumpkin cheesecake, one of my personal favorites. And it's all about the pumpkin, don't forget. So what I did is take three bars of cream cheese and soften it by just putting my blades around it. To that, you could add all your ingredients. So Erica's gonna give me a can of pure pumpkin. And somebody had asked me the other day, is there any brand of pumpkin that is better than the other. If it's pure pumpkin, you could buy the cheapest pumpkin possible because it's all it is is pumpkin. There's no spices or anything else in it. It's what you're going to add to that pumpkin that makes it great. So Erica put in the pumpkin. I have four eggs. I'm going to put those in. And I'm going to whip this a little bit and then we're going to add more and more ingredients. But I'm just going to whip it for just a minute to get those eggs incorporated but it's no you don't have to put it in any sequence of time you could do it any way you'd like to so i'm just going to get these in a little bit it's getting all over me okay wonderful can i have one of the um scrapers erica to yes. scrape the blade the white part of it. perfect it's a white rubber spatula. <laughs> That's why this is doing what it's doing because I got all of the cream cheese stuck in the blades. Oh no, oh no. Yeah. Erin, you want to come over here a second? <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is where Erica comes in handy. She could scrape the blades for me while I'm putting the rest of the ingredients in. So, I get rid of the can of pumpkin, get the blades all cleaned out. <laughs> It's like a pumpkin explosion. Pumpkin explosion, oh no. Put a touch of salt in. So it calls for a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. And it calls for a tablespoon of vanilla. She's having issues, my daughter. Oh, she she dock my hand. <laughs> I love her giggles. That's what she does. When she gets nervous or happy, she giggles all. And the flour and the sugar I'm going to put in last. Like the dry ingredients I'm going to put in last. Put a little bit of cinnamon in them. Put some cinnamon in it. No, that doesn't work. No, it doesn't? It doesn't work with that song. Okay, I'm going to scoop in. This is a quarter of a cup of the sour cream. This is really, really a rich dessert. Decadent. Decadent. Okay. okay, so we got all the spices. We got in. A pretty. Did I put? No, I didn't put pumpkin spice in, did I? Not yet. 
No, okay. you did the cinnamon. Okay, so I have to put my pumpkin spice in, but not a lot because you have pumpkin. So this is just a little extra pumpkin. To add that touch of cloves and the allspice and the nutmeg that we don't add in additionally. Absolutely. So I'm going to put in a nice teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice. So I got the vanilla, the salt, the cinnamon, all the good stuff in. Now I'm going to try to get this to work for me. Ah, look how nice it's going to get this all in. Okay. Just going to use your spatula again and push it all to the middle. And Erica, well, I'm making a mess, girl. I'm making, uh, making a mess, girl. But it's not fun unless you make a mess in the kitchen. Or if you get some on you. Well, I don't want to get it on me because... We're wearing our beautiful new Halloween aprons. We're doing our Halloween aprons, and then next week my girls are going to be wearing this, so I don't <laughs> want to dirty any of their aprons. Okay, so I'm going to leave that. I'm going to put my brown sugar in. It's one and a half cups of brown sugar. And last but not least, so this is all going to be... You're going to clean me up? I'm going to clean up your mess. Oh, please do, Erica, because I can't... Like <laughs> That's the truth, Erica. Always <laughs> cleans up my messes. I'm not being so neat today like I... <laughs> No, you're not. I'm getting, look at this, it's flicking all over the place and I don't even have this on high. So definitely start in slow and go up from there as you get incorporated. Look at this, what a mess. You are a mess. But don't worry about the lumps of the cream cheese, that will be fine. So I'm going to do that, get the lumps out. Scrape again Scrape the sides, get all that good stuff in. Yeah, so a plastic spatula does the work for me. Now, can you put this in the KitchenAid? Absolutely, and probably is easier doing that. But I, you know, I have so a much. Old school. I'm a little old school, and I like still my hand mixer. And these little lumps and bumps will all co cook out as it's baking. So I'm just going to do this one more time around. Look how nice that is. And last but not least, I'm going to add my three tablespoons of flour. That's going to act like a little bit of a binder, but with the add, adding of the flour, this is no longer a gluten-free option. Now, there's other ways of making cheesecake without that little bit of flour. It'll set, but it'll take a little longer in the oven. So I'm going to do that. That's it. I don't have to beat anymore, so make noises beat in your it. ears. Beat it. Yeah, putting that in there, cleaning my hands a little bit, going to make sure everything is really incorporated well, and then I'm going to pour this into my prepared muffin tins. So Cuba and Mother are preparing for our Halloween tea party table. We're going to do individual cheesecakes. So we've gone ahead and we've got the medium muffin tins lined with a cookie uh, with a muffin cup. And we've put a pecan cookie on the bottom to give a little bit of a crunch. So th these are the pecan sandies. And again, it's just going to form your crust. So I do this a lot. I use cookies to form a crust. Why reinvent the wheel? Start with something simple and make your life a whole lot easier. So I'm going to use one of my ice cream scoops. And it's an easy way of filling up these cups. Look how nice that is. And it's the perfect amount, one nice ice cream scoop in there. So we're going to take a break, be right back, and we're going to have these all filled and in the oven. So now we're going to get these into the oven, Erica, and then you'll be able to taste these cheesecakes. How long? How long? How long? It's going to be about 30, 35 minutes until it just sets and you'll see little cracks on the top of the cheesecake. So I'm going to get these into the oven. So welcome back. We are here in our dining room getting ready to taste our little pumpkin buffet. We hope you enjoyed seeing us make our pumpkin spice scones our pumpkin raisin and walnut spread, and our pumpkin cheesecake tonight. It's a pumpkin-licious dinner. A pumpkin-licious. Pumpkin-licious. We're going to have to coin that term. <laughs> Absolutely. So start with your scone, Erica. Oh. 
You see the big pumpkin chips in there and it's nice and chunky on the outside and soft on the inside. Mm. You like it, honey? It's pumpkin-licious. Pumpkin-licious? <laughs> I gave you a new word. Oh, mm -hmm. but it's so good, isn't it? Mm-hmm. You really taste the allspice and the pumpkin. It's perfect. It's the perfect bite. I think next time I might put walnuts in there. That would be nice, a little bite of the nuttiness. So what do we do next? Well, we probably should have our little sandwich first. Are you sure? Okay. I'm a firm believer in eating dessert first. So you see the walnuts in there, so we have the my nuts that I want. Has the uh, cream mm. cheese. Isn't it good? Mm, it's delicious, and the raisins, they're so soft. It's, again, pumpkin delicious. Absolutely, and I like the, how they put the cinnamon swirl in the pumpkin bread. It makes the cinnamon in the spread really come out. And last but not least, you can't wait to taste the cheesecake. <laughs> Look how soft that is, and that cookie actually softened while we cooked when we baked it. So, mmm, how's that, Ed? <laughs> it's she, pumpkin heaven. She is in pumpkin heaven. Well, we want to thank you for joining us. Please feel free to ask any questions, reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. And remember, at Erica's Tea Room, we make memories with every cup.